open source. It's community developed free software that anyone can use or contribute to. This is exactly what Linus Torvalds, Finnish developer and creator of Linux, has been working on for the past 30 years. Now the importance of Linux, which was created originally by Linus at 21 years old, well, it can't be understated because it basically runs the majority of cloud servers on the internet, as well as all of the major supercomputers in the world. Without Linux, the software world would be in a very different place. So we're gonna dive into the backstory of Linus, which is quite interesting, figure out what his motivations were, and try to better understand the culture around open source. And hopefully its peculiar nature will make more sense by the end of this video. Let's dive in to Linus Torvalds and the open source philosophy. If we look at data on GitHub, over 83 million developers have been working on more than 200 million repositories, which are under an open source license, which tells us that open source software, well, it's a big deal. But let's turn back the clock because Linus, well, he didn't start the open source movement. In fact, we have to look back to 1983, where Richard Stallman, he basically created this concept of sharing code. More than an idea, this was like a philosophy where Stallman believed that accessible shared code, well, of course, it allows programmers to understand the inner workings of an application, but not just that, they could customize it to their own needs as well as improve it with their own ideas. It would be safe to say that the software world itself would not work at all without open source. In fact, all common tech stacks are layers of open source code. Languages like JavaScript and Python, they're software themselves. But someone had to write these programming languages. Then on top of that, you have database software like SQL. You've got JavaScript frameworks like Node.js, Angular, React, Express. It's all code that people have spent countless hours on that the developer community can use for free to build better and better projects. Still, it's hard to connect the dots on why so many developers spend time on this. In fact, a study by DigitalOcean said that approximately 50% of developers participated in open source over the past year. There's a few reasons why people do this. First, it's a great way to bulk up your experience and enhance your resume. And a lot of potential employers actually ask if you've ever contributed to open source. 35% of developers who contribute to open source said they've gained enhanced skills from their contributions with 19% saying they've encountered networking opportunities and 11% even finding direct job opportunities from their contributions. 32% said their contributions helped them feel purposeful or part of a wide community. And 20% have stepped into mentorship roles, helping other people develop their skills. So there are both tangible and intangible benefits. Without a doubt, the proliferation of open source has absolutely changed the world and allowed better and better software to be built globally. But initially, companies were reluctant to adopt it. Back in 2001, Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer famously branded Linux a cancer that attaches itself to intellectual property. Naturally, Microsoft was a direct competitor with Windows, which was a paid operating system, so the animosity kind of makes sense. But since then, Microsoft said it's been on the wrong side of history because now they are a heavy user of open source and Linux, as all companies are. Now, that being said, let's revisit Linus and how he became a radical apostle of open source and arguably its most impactful figure of all time. Looking back at Linus's history, it's reasonable to say his creativity was inherited. He came from a family of writers and poets in Helsinki. Now back when he was 11 years old, his grandfather actually had a Commodore VIC-20 computer. So like many famous programmers, he was exposed at an early age. And after a brief stint in Finland's mandatory military service. Torvalds initially bought a Sinclair QL computer, but he did not feel satisfied with what its operating system could do. So naturally, he thought he'd create his own. Now he was familiar with something called Minix, a basic version of Unix, which already existed, that he liked a lot. So based on Minix, he started developing his own OS, which later evolved into his thesis, which was entitled Linux, a portable operating system. Portable in the programming world, meaning it works on many different machines. Linux is actually a kernel. That is the central part of the operating system that everything else is built on top of. It handles low level system access and Linux is completely written in the C programming language. On top of the kernel, you will build distributions. And, and you might know that there's dozens or even hundreds of Linux distributions out there. And they range from highly minimal and customizable, such as Arch Linux, to distributions specifically for hacking, like Kali Linux, to more stable distributions that run on business machines, like Ubuntu. Britannic reported that in 1991, he posted a message on a public forum to let other PC users know about his new system. He made it available for free and released the source code to get feedback. Three years later in 1994, the official 1.0 version of Linux was released under the Richard Stallman GNU 
public license. Linus was also hacking on other projects in the 90s, including his own video games, and he graduated in 1996 with his master's degree before moving to California to work for the company Transmeta. He was a microprocessor manufacturer that he stayed at for six years before he left to work as a project coordinator at the OSDL Open Source Development Labs, which was created in tandem by several high-tech companies such as IBM, Intel, and Siemens to promote Linux development. So while Microsoft was not bullish on Linux at the beginning, these other companies were. Then in 2007, OSDL merged with the Free Standards Group to finally form the official Linux Foundation. While working in Silicon Valley, allegedly, Linus got an offer to work on Apple's kernel from Steve Jobs himself. Apparently he invited Linus to the Cupertino campus, but according to Mac rumors, the condition was that he'd have to drop Linux development altogether. If you watch one interview with a guy, you can tell he's not interested in these sort of things. There's also no way he was going to waver on his original open source dream just to go fully corporate. And likely in the corporate world, he would have become a leader or a manager, which he definitely would not have wanted, being a very idiosyncratic guy who does not enjoy managing people. Continuing that thread, Linus was not in favor of giving it the name Linux in the first place as he thought it was too egotistical. According to Foss, he actually preferred the name Freaks based on Free Freak and Minix, but it was his friend who already created a directory on his FTP server called Linux, and thus the name Linux just continued from there. Now, as the years went by, Linux came into the market as more formalized open source software because it had the backing of Netscape, Coral, Oracle, and Intel. These companies wanted to support Linux as an inexpensive alternative to Windows, whether this was to undermine the Microsoft company itself or use Linux for their own purposes, though most likely it was a combination for both, because these companies would not want to be beholden to a competitor who would have complete power over them. Now Linus, even though he created the original Linux, he doesn't get all the credit because numerous programmers have played leading roles in its development. And Linus actually has stepped down from the former responsibilities of a programmer in recent years. At the Open Source Summit in Lyon, France, Linus actually told his friend that he doesn't even think he's a programmer anymore. He said, quote, I don't know how to code at all anymore. Most of the code I write is in my emails. So someone sends me a patch and I reply with pseudocode. I'm so used to editing patches now, I sometimes edit patches and send out the patch without ever having tested it. This is what I do, I'm not a programmer anymore. This would tell you he's still involved on the strategic side, holding the highest level of authority when it comes to ultimate decision making and how code gets implemented, even if he's not actually writing C on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, all this being said, Linus had a huge impact, obviously. So did he get wealthy from this? And if so, how? Well, this whole time he was employed and sponsored by the other large tech companies. So indirectly, he was making money from that, even if it wasn't on sales of the Linux operating system, specifically from sponsors Red Hat and VA Linux. Some of these shares were also gifts, just as simply gratitude for his creation. And when the company Red Hat went public, Linus's stock value shot up to around 20 million. Now for income these days, the Linux Foundation sponsors Linus as he's still working full time on improving Linux. Allegedly, the foundation pays Linus around 1.5 million per year, which of course is enough to live a pretty good life, but when you compare that to the amount of wealth his contemporaries have, just look at the top richest people in the world list, well, he's definitely not gonna be hitting the 1 billion mark. And if that's what he was interested in, as one publication wrote, had he done that, Linux would never have become what it is today. His main motivation was writing a modern OS on a modest piece of software that a student like him could afford, and that was the mission. And if we look back at the timeline, if he was motivated by money, he would have accepted Steve Jobs' offer and Linux would have been dead in the water. Now, we don't have to guess that much because Linus himself has clarified his stance on money. He said money isn't that great of a motivator in a email interview with Tag1. It doesn't pull people together. Having a common project where you can be a full partner in that project, that's what motivates people. Now, you might not know this either, but Linus has also created the software Git, which was an open source alternative to a different software called BitKeeper. And chances are you've heard of Git and you've never heard of BitKeeper. So you can probably guess how that went. Though he's probably seeming like a folk hero who can do no wrong, often don't have the best impression of him because he's quote, unapologetically argumentative. As Foss reported, he is not a diplomatic person. He doesn't even try to be polite or politically correct. And in fact, he's known for his angry outbursts. In fact, you'll see swearing in the Linux kernel mailing list when he's unhappy with a kernel patch. According to the New Yorker, his emails are full of insults, demeaning language. Guys, please kill yourself now. The world will be a better place. In a different email, guys, this is not a sucking contest. Then in another, fuck up, in all caps. He even called his own lawyer a nasty festering disease. And for that, he was criticized by many developers and contributors. But Linus will be the first to admit 
that sometimes he's an unpleasant person and he's apologized for being a jerk. In one mailing list thread, he wrote, some people have confronted me about my lifetime of not understanding emotions. My attacks and emails have been unprofessional and uncalled for, especially when I made it personal. I need to change my behavior and want to apologize for the people I drove away from kernel development entirely. I'm gonna take some time off and get some assistance on how to understand people's emotions and respond better. Naturally, this email leads you to believe that he alienated some people to the degree where they actually left the project and kernel development field entirely. With open source being highly collaborative, it can get quite frustrating if people criticize your work, especially when you're doing it for free. But being his multi-decade long creation and main focus, you probably understand why Linus would take this more seriously than anyone else. With that being said, now you know a little bit more about open source and who you could probably refer to as the godfather of open source itself. I've just started using Linux myself, getting on Arch Linux, and I've been loving it so far. And I'm a longtime user of open source tools like React, which is a creation of the company Facebook, the open source for all of us. If you want to read more about open source, a great book is called The Cathedral and the Bazaar. It's a bit dated, but it's a very solid read to understand the philosophy better. And if you're in the software world, it's very important to understand its impact. Because as Microsoft said, open source software is basically the industry accepted model for cross company collaboration, which even competitive companies can take advantage of other companies tools, which drives the software industry as a whole forward. With that being said, do you have an opinion on open source? Does it make sense to you? And would you ever contribute? The last thing I'll leave you with is a Linus Torvalds quote, software is like sex. It's better when it's free. Talk to you soon for more tech stories.